sandstorms, horses, and bayonets, we played the Battlefield 1 beta for this week's Roundtable. Welcome to Tiny Spaceship's Roundtable, where we discuss all sorts of things, namely video games. Today we'll be discussing Battlefield 1. With me I have Johnny, David, Matthew, Miguel, I am Kevin. Guys, Battlefield 1 was a uh, interesting beta. As just a little introduction for the, for the listeners, uh, i.e. no one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Battlefield One was a it, Battlefield is a as a first person shooter uh, known for its epic scale, uh, most notably for its game mode known as Conquest, which pits 32 players against 32 players in a large battlefield scenario using both guns, vehicles, and other tactics to try and overcome and gain territory control. Uh, the beta was uh, largely successful. I, I think it was a bit polarizing for a lot of people, but just generally thoughts. Does anyone have any general thoughts they want to talk about? Mostly positive for me. I, I felt like the, there were some pretty big improvements over the previous games in the series. A lot of changes. So it felt a little different than the previous games also, but ultimately I thought it was pretty positive. I think there were a lot of uh, good quality of life improvements. I think they brought in some of the benefits of Battlefront without necessarily bringing in all of the sort of balance issues and completely different movement scheme that it has relative to Battlefield. But little things I didn't miss are like the browser-based launcher. Um, I didn't really miss... Uh, you know, some of the sort of the, the clunkiness of trying to get into the game, and it felt uh, pretty smooth in that regard, at least for sure. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, and it's a- rolling back on Battle Log was probably the, one of their best decisions on this point. For I will sure. say, I miss I miss the ability to hua everyone's posts. Hua, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's true. Hua, yeah. hua. Uh, but um, I, I will say, there, there definitely was a lot of Battlefront influence, which I think a lot of people would have been initially uh, really off-put by, since Battlefront was not well-received largely. But the ability to have, like, uh, in-game pickups, sort of these special abilities uh, that weren't really just weapons, though there was the AT gun, which was really just largely a weapon pickup. Flamethrower pickups, the uh, sentry pickup, they actually buffed your health and they gave you a lot of damage resistance so they did make you kind of a juggernaut on the battlefield which for a battlefield game was relatively different approach but i actually feel like it was handled really well i think it's better than battlefront because battlefront seemed like they were just so fucking random like in this game at least they had like set spawn points i don't believe it was that way in battlefront no, you just sort of had to wander around the field until you found the spawn point and then that's how you got into a vehicle or that's how you you know got, turned into the luke skywalker and things like that and, and, and I think what's, you know, really speaks to the, like, the, the sort of the history of the Battlefield franchise is these guys felt powerful and unique, but um, they gave you, they feel like they give you the opportunity to do really crazy, really cool things to affect the game, the way the game is going, but nowhere near as kind of overpowered, I think, as the heroes were in Battlefront. And heck, I mean, you can still take a bayonet to the chest, even if you're a sentry with a lot of sure. damage damage reduction, and uh, and you're out you're out for the count. And the flamethrower okay. guy, you're careful with too, because you can just set yourself on fire and die. Uh-huh. <laughs> I also thought it was kind of neat how if you spawned an airplane, for instance, you were that class, you weren't whatever class you had before. Same with the you know. Well, the if you were the pilot of the airplane, well, you ended up as a pilot class. Yeah, that's well, what yeah, I'm saying. But, I, yeah. yeah, that's that's the that's the real benefit though, because it it no longer are you encouraged to be a sniper, jump into a plane just to bail out and get a sweet vantage point. You can't can't do that anymore if you want to get a plane you have to be the pilot class which has a relatively crappy gun because he's not meant to be anything other than a pilot well you could still do that you just have to have someone else be the pilot because as uh, we experienced last night uh, there were like three snipers on the mountaintop above F um, not the ridge but like directly on top of the mountain which should not be reachable unless they jumped out of a plane which I'm guessing they did sure and and I don't think that that's necessarily against the spirit of battlefield but at least you know that they didn't just jump out of a plane and just destroy it you know to get there they this, there's still a pilot who's probably still flying that plane around and maybe he's basically acting as a as a passenger shuttle which is kind of in the spirit of battlefield they used to have transport choppers and things that were never used by anything other than the single sniper who would take it and fly off so I really think that is actually a really good quality of life change to the series. Sure. Well, it definitely gives you the ability to, like, if you're having a tank duel with somebody and, you know, it's getting crazy and, and they're they're taken down, very rarely do you get, you know, a, a real one-shot kill or it really blow up a tank. It's often, you know, you're really disabling it for a series of seconds, giving them enough time to get out. Well, now when they get out, they're a tanker class, which 
has a pretty terrible gun, um, has like only one grenade and it's not very customizable. I think it's really cool to see having some relative downsides, whereas in the previous ones, you could really just be whatever you wanted, obviously almost always an engineer, but there, you, know, there was... you could pop out with an RPG and just blow up a tank that you're fighting. Yeah, and there was a really cool moment I realized where I because I, I was almost never actually the tanker class because I normally went down with my ship because a lot of tank on tank combat was actually relatively uh, narrow. You would win by a hair, you'd lose by a hair. But I did notice that one time when I got out, uh, the anti tank class does have an anti tank grenade, and I actually used that to finish off the tank who had technically won the tank battle but ultimately lost the war because I not only downed his tank, but I killed him. For sure. I mean, well, we're kind of burying the lead in terms of, like, weapon, uh, uh, vehicle changes because uh, the tanker class is really cool, but, you know, to your point about going down with the ship, well, uh, repairing inside the vehicle, I mean, I think this is a change that's pretty polarizing. Um, I think it's going to need to undergo some significant balance changes, but, uh, I mean, it's from a certain aspect of being immersive or being, you know, uh, interesting in terms of enabling the crew inside a vehicle to repair it, uh, it's just such a fundamental change to the way even back since you know 1942, that people are used to just playing in you know the entire standalone engineer class. I think they definitely well, need they... to change the way that uh, tanks get disabled because it seems like I would have to take at least four grenades before I would not be able to move or anything like that. And the uh, previous iterations of Battlefield, like in four and three, the tanks are definitely a lot easier to disable and they they, they couldn't move or anything like that or just a lot slower. Well, it, it definitely there there definitely is some kind of positional damage going on. I, I noticed that I, I got a turret disabled once on on I think a light tank, and I've gotten track disabled too, which is which is different than vehicle disabled. And there's some kind of positional damaging there, but it just seems so finicky. I was never able to reliably do that. And I would try and purposefully aim my AT rounds, which admittedly are incredibly underpowered, at a, a tank's treads to try and get that again. Because, you know, damaging their mobility is the one thing that, that really kills them. And I never could get that consistently. I think I only had that happen once or twice. That was the, the biggest, I think, disappointment for the game for me was the fact that support usually has some way to deal with tanks and things like that. And... It's possible maybe there's something later down the road I didn't unlock. I, I, I'm not sure. I think they did a bad job of uh, gating all the weapons for this beta. Uh, that um, seemed like a really stupid choice. I'd, I'd much rather like get to try out all the weapons or at least more than I had there. Well, the last day they I, did unlock everything, but I still didn't notice oh. anything on the uh, support class that would allow you to take on the tank. The, the closest thing in support that you could do to take on a tank is you could take uh, anti-tank personal mines, which are different than the anti-tank mines that... Uh, uh, assault gets they're much weaker but being support you could in essence effectively have an unlimited amount of them because of the slow resupply time and all that realistically you've got one and then that tank's gonna blow you away or just leave yeah, the, yeah. just having one piddly anti-tank mine usually isn't enough to take on a tank yeah. that's actively uh, engaging you i just had to basically leave them alone um so but that felt really annoying because that traditionally that class can deal with them i just feel like there weren't really many solutions to tanks yeah, and, and I will say, like, for the support class, the really bewildering thing, at least from my from, from my perspective, is I felt like the LMGs were uh, quite underpowered as well. So if we're, you know, if we're thinking about uh, really differentiating these classes, giving them all an opportunity to, you know, have it, like, affect the, affect the uh, game and really encourage people to build balanced squads, sure, the ammo crate is great. Um, obviously hugely important, but, uh, man, there doesn't seem to be much going for the support class other than that. Infinite grenades, man, that's, for, that's something. <laughs> well, I did, if, I did try out some of the later guns that they had on, when they unlocked all the weapons, and there's a scope machine gun that's actually pretty damn good. That's the one I use, the one with the, the bipod. You just it's like, go uh, prone, and you can snipe the shit out of people. Well, really yeah, I was, like, I was sitting at D, and there was, like, four people at, uh, it was a B or something, I believe, they were sniping at me, so I just, like, suppressed all of them, and they weren't able to really to return fire. Yeah, and, and it's good, and the suppression mechanic is back in this battlefield, and, and it's pretty decent, although I do think they severely limited the uh, the radius a bullet has to pass by you to consi to to have to be considered suppressed, because um, I noticed it not happening nearly as much, even when I heard shots whizzing by me. But the thing about the, the that big machine gun, I tried it too, and it overheats after 30 rounds of continuous fire. Even yeah. though it's a 200-round belt-fed machine gun, it, it just seems like they don't know what to do with the support class. The overheating mechanic is... Uh, dumb. which gun is that? I don't... My gun it's never overheated. It's, it's, called the it's called the suppressor. Oh, um, yeah, okay. That's the one that yeah. Hacker was using. <laughs> I remember now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's there's definitely some cheap problems. We <laughs> ran into that one guy who was hanging out miles away in the desert beneath sand dunes and was managing to effortlessly headshot us from across the map. <laughs> he nailed me through a window, which is one of those those vertical slit windows. <laughs> As I was <laughs> running through the building, I was like, yeah... <laughs> 
trash. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it became pretty obvious he was hacking after that. But uh, he like quit. But since it was open beta, hopefully that won't be as prevalent in the game because people will be scared of actually getting banned for a game they bought. Yeah, I mean, when 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 a game is free, the barrier for entry for hacking is really low. I don't know about you guys. I don't. I didn't encounter that many hackers in BO4. I mean, they certainly were there. It's hard to tell. Yeah, it definitely really it definitely sell. wasn't a consistent problem for me. That was the only obvious hacker I saw. That I mean, again, impossible to tell sometimes, especially so, snipers. So, so we talked a little bit about um, uh, tanks and, and the mechanics of, of being a driver, but uh, the one thing that I think really got everyone kind of cheesed, whether you were actually stoked for it because you were abusing it or whether you were a victim of it, uh, light tanks in this game are a goddamn nightmare. <laughs> close, <Yep. laughs> close support light tanks are literal murder machines. No, it's um, worse than a light tank. Two light tanks. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, like, just just to, like, if you didn't play this, like, you have two main weapons. Your main one is a pretty standard tank cannon. Your secondary weapon is a canister shot, which we had in Battlefield 4. But for whatever reason, it's incredibly powerful in the light and, tank. If you, and if just you, in I was just going to say, just in case you don't know what a canister shot is, it is a tank shotgun shell. It is a literal wall of bullets. And it is amazing. And it, you basically get the reticle anywhere over, anywhere near somebody, and if they're within about mm, forty yards, one shot kill, almost certainly. And uh, what, re what really got people, I think, pretty upset about light tanks is there's, a, there's, a, I think, there's some major issues, and I'd like to discuss some, like, because like, you know, I think we all know that it's going to be nerfed for the release. So I think when you think about light tanks and how overpowered they were. There's some major issues. One, you can uh, you can go into third person mode and you have aiming reticles. They're slightly different than what you have in inside the tank, but are still extremely accurate. Uh, so really, you don't have any sort of means of a uh, means of like limiting the awareness of a driver. Uh, two, I think that obviously the weapons are just incredibly strong. And three, I think the amount of dedicated firepower to take down even a one man light tank. It was frankly ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. The the ability to uh, repair within your tank and never have to expose yourself vulnerably. Uh, I don't know. I, on the one hand, I like it because uh, it means you can't really have somebody just outside of your tank repairing you while you maintain just a normal tank control, as was seen in a lot of Battlefield Four uh, kind of high level vehicle play. It would be one main tank guy and a gunner who would get out and repair while the main guy still had total control over his cannon. Now, when you repair, you lose control of movement, you lose control of being able to shoot and attack. Um, and so that is a, a fair trade-off. And, and technically the tank class does actually have a repair hammer and he could get out and repair, but it's a very, very slow. It, it, it's maybe 10% of what it used to be. What do you guys feel about it's like, movement speed is it too fast uh i th <laughs> they they hmm. seem to move reasonably okay i mean like it i, think, like I think the speed is fine. fine the turret transversal may be there a little we go. slower but yeah the actual speed of the tank is fine or weren't, yeah, weren't those tanks it, in real life two man tanks one driver one <laughs> they shooter? were yeah. Well, why don't so they just that, make them that way? If they're that strong, well, we need well, two but, people but to I think I think if we're going to have a realism talk, we need to talk about a lot of things. <laughs> well, it's not so much a realism. It's Everybody just has a, automatic weapons. <laughs> it's just yeah, a justification it, of a way to nerf it, though. Oh, sure, sure. And and I think I think for that would be fine. I personally think that the way to nerf those tanks is you, you got to just nerf how quickly they can repair themselves. Or if you even want to keep it relatively the same, but make it maybe repair... In, no, I, yeah, you just need to nerf the speed. It's too fast. You can go, if you manage to get behind cover before somebody can, can close the gap on you to get another line of sight, you might have healed 50% of your life. I, it's ridiculous. I don't think that the move speed is the problem. I think the traversal speed is the problem. And I think the third person reticle being so accurate, I think that's a serious problem. Well, they, um, they acknowledge that it's going to be nerfed anyway, so... I, oh, of course. No, but I, mean, I just, I just wonder... It I, true, but I just feel like it could, it could take so many forms, you know what I mean? In the tank, it, your view should be like it is with a stationary turret, a.k.a. garbage. <laughs> Oh, the, those Maxim guns? I don't yeah, even yeah. know why they're in the game. It's incredible. Yeah, it's, we can't even, is, like, it, barely move those damn things. So this this game was absolutely poisoned with snipers, and I think that largely was because of the map. Uh, Sinai Desert is pretty much... It, it harkens back to... Uh, I, I'm blanking on the name right now, but that big vehicle uh, Golan, map. Golan Railway, I think? Yeah, yeah. yeah I think... You know, it, it, it's basically a vehicle-centric map, and, and beside one main point C, which is a little village, there is no cover. It is, uh, in my opinion, 
a garbage map. <laughs> it's a pretty bad map. You try to you spawn at like A or B, and then you have to basically run across a, a huge fucking field and yeah. get sniped at constantly. So I, mean, I, I, I can't think of like the amount of times I was just sitting with a light tank at D and blowing people off the cliff at F. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if people, uh, I don't know if you guys read the uh, subreddits for Battlefield while the beta was going on. There's about a million jokes about spawning at E with no vehicle, but it's, uh, whether or not those are funny, it's a real drag to uh, be on a vehicle-based map with um, what I think are really cool and well-designed vehicles, but boy, really crappy slow jeeps and uh, very relatively uh, relatively rare in terms of their ability to uh, availability to players. It's just bad map design to have a gigantic empty space with absolutely nothing to do with the map. I mean, like, yeah. sure, it's like adds to the environment, but like, I mean, honestly, what are you going to do with all that space I mean, between E and all the other points? <laughs> catching somebody in the open with a horse in between those points is fucking magic. Oh, yeah, uh, it's fun, like, running in yeah. with a horse in there <laughs> and just, true. like, sabering all the snipers with that. <laughs> Guys, we, right. we only have about 40 minutes left, so we got to start talking about that horse now because it's going to take all okay, the rest so of the time. Got cavalry. Um, wow. I don't know about you guys, but I when I saw the launch trailers and everything, I'm like, of course, okay, sure. Cavalry was in, was, a, was a significant part of World War One. Kind of limited in terms of like where it could be deployed because obviously of the effectiveness of uh, machine guns and all that. But, uh, man, I did not think it would be so incredibly fun <laughs> to ride around sabering people. <laughs> Well, and, uh, and, you know, they made an excellent choice making cavalry as damage-resistant as they were. At, at first, when I started realizing that, I thought it was complete bullshit. I, I, I was frustrated with it. But they are a giant moving bullet sponge that everyone can hurt. Um, so if you can stay alive in cavalry, it, it's not necessarily because of the resistance, but it's because you know how to play cavalry well. I think it speaks to what cavalry is really all about. Now, like, vers like ha re realism aside... Uh, cavalry opens up a very interesting design space for Battlefield because it's a really fast uh, flanking, harassing, skirmishing type uh, type ability. Honestly, it's 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 different, but the role almost fits like the little bird um, in the sense that like it's supposed to be a very small combat package that hits fast, moves, comes from unpredictable angles, is really strong against individuals, but you know can pretty quickly get taken down by mass fire. So would you propose that they change the name to Little Horse? Little <laughs> exactly. well, Sebastian. <laughs> only difference is, the only bye, difference is bye, there's, not, little Sebastian. there's not a man inside of your horse healing it as you run along. <laughs> uh, man, you, you can heal the horse with, by hitting it in the butt with a hammer, so that's pretty great. <laughs> I was a little disappointed about you couldn't heal the horse by like feeding it carrots or something. <laughs> feeding it apples. <laughs> that would be pretty great. The horse has apples. Man, so I also think making them a secondary source of both healing and resupply is inspired i think that's really cool yeah they can run through and actually like drop shit as they go and helping people there and and they drop two anti-tank they come with st standard with two anti-tank grenades they're a very cool kind of jack of Wait, all trades they? they're not the best they yeah. do so they're not the best at everything huh. their their rifle is extremely accurate but not really going to compete with a sniper they don't, don't resupply health health or ammo <laughs> <laughs> I did quite a lot of counter sniping with that rifle it's pretty good but i barely used the rifle i guess i was i was using it wrong i was well, pretty much I, I, I the, the, use the saber pretty much it's literally the lever action um, from the scout class. I, I used it once it I got is. off the horse, but I didn't use it while I was on the horse. Oh yeah, being off the horse is arguably better than being on the horse sometimes. You can still it's an incredible class. class. I, horse. <laughs> I, I would spawn as it in a hot second without the horse even i mean i love the I, horse trust me i yeah I, I i think i'd take yeah i mean obviously it well i mean it's even off the horse it actually has damage resistance so it's a definitely strong class you're wearing a um, queerest man i i will say this i had a very battlefield moment where there was a land ship and i basically was just circling it and throwing anti grenade uh, anti tank grenades at it and then dropping resupplies which i would then run <laughs> over once i completed the circle and i would slowly get my anti tank grenades back and i managed to destroy it that way and it took it took a solid 35 <laughs> seconds, and this guy just could not <laughs> land a shot on me. Uh, and it was amazing. Uh, so basically what I'm saying is they need to nerf the horse. Was that was that one of those amazing <laughs> one-man land tanks? Land uh, I, I think there was only oh, one man. dude in it, yeah. Because yeah. it didn't seem like the side cans were firing. Otherwise, I definitely would have probably been dead. But those could have been so it, much it more is powerful versatile people class. could figure out how to use them. He was probably just mashing his F keys to try to strafe around the tank to shoot <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well. land, oh man, so if we're talking about balance in, in a certain sense in land ships, boy, you talk about the difference between really having the potential to shape the, the, the round, but very often just being a total disappointment, frankly. You just you need 
coordination between your squad in order to actually make it effective and whoa, whoa, whoa. Just... what game what game are you playing where you have coordination with your squad? <laughs> hey we when we when we got into that land ship we did pretty damn good with it well i mean yeah we, when uh, we get into a thing yeah, exactly. have an objective, a commit... we do well but everyone else on the team just does their own thing that's a so. commitment oh. of at least three to five players though and they could be doing yeah. so much shit and like one person on a land uh light tank can do quite a bit yeah honestly yeah. i'm not really i'm not really convinced that a full land ship at this at this game at the current balance is more effective than one competent light tank which is a kind of more, not not necessarily a dig at the land ship more a dig at the ridiculousness of the light tanks right now it will be interesting to me to see what what however they decide to nerf the light tank how land ships will sort of rise or fall relative to that cuz yeah i mean you just talk about a pretty insane investment of manpower um which you know kind of serves an APC style role if you want to deliver guys into a point under fire, but uh, for the most part, just seems to be a very slow roaming kill bus. Well, the 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 heavy tank is more the well, APC, unless that's, yeah, that's what you said. The heavy tank, the the land ship is the one with the two cannons on. Yeah, 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 the, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's. I mean, I don't know. I think that one would be more effective than a a light tank if you can actually get people to talk to each other, be like, hey, I need to turn this way a little bit in order to. Hit it because you you have the same firepower or even better with that like you ha still have the canister shot and you still have the regular tank shell on, on that one. I mean, and and with the heavy tank, you can get a variant that has two flamethrowers on the front and back. So, just think about that for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So, game of the year. Or... The, 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 the heavy tank is clearly meant to be a personnel supporter because there's one that is literally like uh, it can drop health kits around it is one of its abilities i don't think oh, anyone wow. ever used that very interesting concept but I, I i love the design too because the land ship looks amazing can, can we agree on that it looks awesome it is a very nice scary design. looking thing when it crests yeah. a hill right next to you um the light tank is kind of this adorable little spunky little thing <laughs> and then the heavy tank is just a shoebox. <laughs> Just the most <laughs> stupid design, giant, and I know that that was the actual thing at the time, but it just looks like a giant shoebox that someone taped uh, two wheels on and just kind of mutts I around. I think the, the AA one is worse. Yeah, the AA <laughs> truck looks like truck. a shoebox. The heavy <laughs> tank looks like a toaster. <laughs> okay, <laughs> the brave little toaster crusty precision, crusty precision <laughs> German engineering, right? <laughs> like the head of a like the head of a sledgehammer, kind of. Yeah, exactly. It was, uh, amazing. Um, I will say that the game looks amazing. It looks great. Um, I. I, I'm going to go ahead and say that it might be the best looking first person shooter I've played uh, ever, maybe even. Uh, I haven't played Doom yet. I know Doom is probably vying for that title, but... The different uh, styles, the but yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's very good looking. I'm really interested to see the other maps, though, too, because of the weather oh effects God, yeah. in this. They had they have several different weather effects on a fucking yeah. desert map. What, like, what is going to happen with the snow or, you know... Oh, yeah, man. yeah, and I, I mean, we all love Darud Sandstorm, but um, <laughs> it's like... I think it lasted no, I mean, a little bit too long. It sometimes was obnoxious. Uh, but at the same yeah. time, it was, a, it was also too. a blessing from snipers, though. So, oh, yeah. yep. wait. But sometimes, Guys, what like, are sandstorms? Some people I, would be like, in a sandstorm, yeah. and other people would not be in a sandstorm, and just be like kind of weird. So. Yeah, there was a bug where it wasn't ending properly for some players. I had that happen to me once, and I was like, <laughs> when is the sandstorm going to end? And you guys <laughs> were like, what <laughs> sandstorm? I was like, no. Uh, no I mean, if, if, if we're going to talk about how the game looks, just briefly, like the terrain deformation is back in a big way. Oh, um, yeah. And it's hugely important to creating cover for, uh, for infantry, yeah. even for tanks, too. <laughs> and uh, the terrain deformation looks beautiful, uh, at yep. least even in the desert map. Um, the ground that gets torn up, the textures and the uh, really everything just combined with the dynamic weather makes it just uh, incredibly, uh, I don't know, I don't want to say immersive, <laughs> but makes it incredibly uh, beautiful. But the thing yeah. that also happens is it makes the you know the battlefield floating objects happen quite a bit, like sandbags floating in the air beneath <laughs> yeah. A, yeah. over a crater. It's ridiculous. Well, there's always a, there's always this light machine gun that gets stuck in midair when the building got blown up <laughs> right around the city. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is still a dice game. <laughs> there, that's right. D, the, the point D, the one that's kind of right in the dead center of the map and really doesn't have a lot of cover. It starts with a box car, but that's blown to smithereens almost immediately. That point is saved by the fact that it is often cratered with yep. you know four foot deep holes you can hide in and that is amazing that is legitimately one of the coolest battlefield experiences is, is shooting guy seeing a tank and diving into a crater that was just created by a bomber that flew overhead that is legit a battlefield moment and i think battlefield one does that incredibly well 
And the problem I think is she... when the, the train rolls through and you get blown up by it anyway, because they can still see you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I mean, let's talk about that train. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, so he, here's the thing with the train. So we should talk about the big, the big change, right? So about halfway through the beta, they changed the conquest mode from basically a race to uh, from a, a timed uh, competition between how how many points you've scored based on the, amount, the proportion of uh, points that you've captured to requiring you to go all the way to 300 uh, points. Now the difference here is that the train is spawned when you're behind by 50 tickets, uh, or about 50 tickets. We're not too about, sure about on that number. about 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 50 tickets. Point being that when you go all the way to 300, being back by 50, not a big deal. And that train might have about four trillion hit points. Yep. I don't know, man. I, I I think that was the main problem is people were not focusing it because we were in a match and that train basically died almost immediately. So what? I don't know. There, there we there weren't. I don't know if we had enough games to really know how this was really going to pan out. It could be. Well, you weren't you you weren't there. Let, just just quickly to to uh, Matthew's point here, you weren't there uh, the other night when we were playing, and we actually managed to figure out that if we all went assault and went AT mines and dynamite and put it on the track where we knew the train would come, like at a point that was ours, but across the map from where their train currently was, uh, we could take off about a third of its health in one go. So if you do focus it, you can kill it pretty quickly, but it also required us, which not to tutor on horn, we were almost always the top of the scoreboard because we were actually playing the objective. That was about five to eight minutes of us having to do that and not being able to play the objective at all. And then well, you'd we be capping the point you're at, right? You'd, you'd be taking D while you're doing that. No, right? no, no, because we, we would have to spawn at a point that was already ours because the train maybe would be on the other side taking a point because you mm -hmm. can't do that if the train's anywhere near it. So it, it would be like a point that we just took and then okay. we'd spawn there expecting the train to make its way over there. Like we'd spawn at G after we just took it and the train's at A because the train wasn't there yet and then it would make its way over to G where we would then blow it up. Because you can't what? do it in front of the train. It's just a murder machine. Well, the the thing I, you know, I realized because I was dropping things on the tracks as well, but I had like the crappy trip mines, which didn't do very much. But it, is this the driver or the person that's on the front facing in being dumb and not just like checking the track for mines and things? Because they could shoot those, right? They could, but it's not super obvious, and I think at that point in time, I don't think anyone was really doing it, so they didn't expect it. If you're the driver of literally eight, like 800 tons of pure steel, would tiny mines really deter you? Okay. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. And, well, and also, also, it's dumb even, to me, like, you could totally destroy those tracks like with just like a fifth <laughs> of that firepower, but all right, yeah. whatever. <laughs> well, and, and also, even if they do, even if the engineer did actually see it, that train stops so slowly that... By the time you do see it, you might not. I mean, you might be able to yell at like somebody, "Hey, shoot that!" But like, you can't <laughs> stop. This did that train okay. keeps rolling. Well, I feel like it, it's sort of like the AT-ATs, and when it was in the Battlefront beta, and the rebels just like never could destroy the damn things. But you know, as the game actually went on, you know, the actual form, people managed to figure out, "Oh, we're, we're supposed to focus fire that." So I believe as the game goes on, it, the trains and other mega vehicles will become less of a problem. Yeah, I I do I do. I don't, I don't know how I feel about it, because in a sense, I appreciate the kind of chaotic nonsense it brings. I appreciate the kind of underdog story it's trying to tell, you know, you're down, so here's here's something. But at the same time, too, it feels like it, the game's punishing you for doing well. It's like, yes, we've been playing the objective, we're doing so great, and then all of a sudden, now the <laughs> enemy team has an advantage. Uh, I, I get that it's a balanced thing, but it, it, it makes me want to strategically play worse until the very end of the game so that I can ensure they don't have that train for too long or ensure that I get the train early so that then we can use it to kind of turn the tides aggressively and then hold a really strong dominance. So it's the blue shell of Battlefield is what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty, pretty much. much. So, it, so the strongest tank strat is to tank for the train? Yes, tanking for the tank is currently the meta. <laughs> I don't know, the, tr the train can pretty much rip up any tank that decides to look at it, so... <laughs> It is, yeah, it is a legit beast, I, especially I have in anti-air. People will get run over by the train, which is pretty funny. Like, I don't know how the fuck that happens. <laughs> it's sort of like the awesome <laughs> powers thing. Oh no! <laughs> Stop! If if only I could tell where the train was likely to go. <laughs> What's that noise? <laughs> ah. I feel like the, the enemy team gets the or the losing team, I should say, gets the train a little too fast because even if they do get it and we do manage to focus fire it and destroy it, we can still win, but just barely. Like if we weren't concentrating on that, I feel like we would have lost just as easily there, even if we had yeah. destroyed the train yeah maybe there should be a sort of timer that you have to pass before you can uh get the train even if you are losing by 50 points mm -hmm. or so there's definitely there's there's definitely some tweaking they need to do in, in how they 
determine when and who to give the the train to because i think a big right part of it too if you have people in those anti-air turrets that are shooting at like infantry and tanks and stuff and not focusing planes and bombers oh i bet God. you could kill that train oh, pretty damn quick yeah yeah and that happens a the, lot well and and the weird thing is is what i one round i remember in particular that really bothered me um was we were winning but uh, all you know, for the last little bit, we had actually started kind of losing. We we weren't losing in ticket count, but they were having way better territory control. We only had one point, and they had all of the other points. But we were still ahead by about twenty to twenty-five tickets, and then they got a train, <laughs> and we lost unequivocally. We lost that round, and that just seemed absolutely absurd. It, it it felt like they were kicking, like it felt like we had taken an advantage, and we were starting to lose it, and then the game just kicked us while we were down a bit, and said, "Well, now you're, you know, now there's no way you're going to come back." And uh, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I I definitely love it when it's in my benefit, and I hate it when it's against my benefit. <laughs> yeah, I think I was on the other team when that happened, and felt pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well you know when you're winning it's a good game and when you're losing you know, it's a bad game <laughs> that is how we determine what game is good and what game is bad in our group well it's true i mean look to me the train is like a very cool opportunity it's an interesting design space for for battlefield something that you know it's obviously borrowed from battlefront um i hope they really i hope they listen to the community on this one for uh for feedback from the beta because yeah i mean if they can get the spawning right I think the train felt great. Like, it's a cool vehicle. So, uh, you know, I'd love to see it as long as it uh, doesn't feel like too much of a punishment. I mean, Miguel, I'm pretty sure you killed every plane in the sky for an entire round with the train. (laughs) Uh, not the train, but the uh, the AA truck. I, I did it in the train. The <laughs> oh, you, the train. you did it, Matthew. Okay. Who's Miguel? Are we talking about skyscraper? <laughs> <laughs> I just I remember him saying, "Oh, there's this planes everywhere. Why won't anyone spot an artillery truck?" And then I think David, you gave him one finally yep. as like a gift. You were like, "Guess what? I got you." <laughs> and you were so happy. And then there were no planes from there on out. <laughs> it was incredible. Can we talk about that? Okay, look, this has always been this has been my axe to grind since Battlefield Two. Um, <laughs> boy, I hate planes. Plane metagame. Yep. Um, <laughs> uh, helico- helicopters are one thing. I actually think they're very interesting. I mean, we'll set those aside because they're not even really a Battlefield One topic. I think planes have gotten a lot better. I think bombs are not that accurate. I think they require a lot of skill. Uh, most of the fighters have no way to address like f- shooting the ground. Now the ground attack planes, that's a different issue. Oh well, yeah, I think I, the. I, uh, Tank Hunter loadout for the attack plane is a little too strong right now. It's kind of it's kind of puzzling too. Like I'm not sure why you'd mount that gun um, with that much ammo uh, yeah. on a plane, but you know, it, it's it, the tank hunter can hunt <laughs> tanks, infantry, planes, uh, pretty much anything. <laughs> the the tank hunter is better as a fighter than the fighter is, I, and yep, that is a perplexing true. choice. Really I'm not mad um, at the bombers though. The bombers are like fucking awesome. Like when you're in that city and like they start dropping bombs everywhere, like it's even if they do end up getting you, it's I, I feel like that's like pretty epic. And the I think, you see him coming down, it's like kind of a great moment. And I think I think a lot of people are underestimating the bomber's real potential because uh, the bombs are great. The area denial bombs are amazing. I absolutely love them. You literally carpet bomb an area with incendiary bombs, which is so much fun, and you get a lot more kills that way on infantry. But the front gun oh, of yeah. the splash bomber damage. is a splash <laughs> damage machine gun. The, the, the rear is not, just the front. And that thing kills more people than any bombs ever will. That thing yep. is a beast. And I think it's in a really good place because it's strong. It's almost kind of like the chopper gunner's gun uh, or the attack, attack helicopter chopper gunner, whatever you want to call that. Uh, but that plane still goes down easy. You know, good yeah. helicopter pilots, really, good chopper gunners yeah. were impossible to kill in, in Battlefield uh, in, in olden days. Uh, back in the day, me and David used to play uh, 2142 as a pilot gunner combo, and we were nigh unkillable. Uh, but the bomber goes down easy. So it, it has a high damage potential, but it's also the biggest, fattest, largest target in the sky mm-hmm. that actually any gun can do damage to. Your SMG can, can riddle it for t- five to ten damage which isn't a lot but if there's eight infantry men on the ground shooting at it that thing's going to go yeah. down even just from small arms fire you can hit the pilot too you know <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> yep. no, oh yeah I don't, I don't know if i don't know if you guys got pilot snipes but uh yeah it's pretty yeah. fun i got one with the at, at, at e uh there is a at rifle which is basically just a god gun it fires a massive caliber bullet it has almost no drop it does immense damage to 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 tanks and to all vehicles and I shot a front gunner out of a bomber with it. And I was excited because I thought I got the pilot. I was hoping to see it go down. But even still, that bullet just blows things away. It's it's the best counter-sniping weapon in the game. Pretty much. And um, 
I think, I don't know, well, the uh, light tanks actually are pretty good anti-air guns themselves. Because yep. you, know? you just wait for, uh, like, a tank hunter or something to pass over you, and then you just fire the canister shell at them, and they pretty much die. Uh, canister shells at close enough range will pretty much one-shot a plane, which I find very satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> the I didn't spend much time I... in planes, though. Were you, were you flying at all in this game? I was flying a lot. I flew a lot, too. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, there's something really relaxing to me about dropping successful bombs. It's yep. It's... A no, it's a low risk but high reward thing where if you miss, you just circle back and try again. But man, if you get that torpedo bomber and you drop it right on a tank, it does immense damage and it's incredibly satisfying. I feel it's like the, do, the, I like the bomber quite a bit because it feels like it actually ties into the ground game a lot more. Whereas in like Battlefield 4, it felt like it was the jets were just like, oh, we're just having our little jet fights up here, not doing jack shit. Yeah. Yeah. Than just fighting other jets. <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah. And, and that's pretty much what the fighter, what people flying fighters would do. Um, but ultimately, uh, towards the end of the beta, I sort of got, I saw almost no fighters and everyone was just doing the attack plane cannon bullshit, yep. um, which makes sense because it was really, really, really strong. But the, the thing about the, the bomber that is incredibly unintuitive, I think, is the sighting scope because it's really unclear how to really kind of adjust your aim when you're using it. You kind of have to use yaw more than turning, and pitch doesn't really affect it. And I think it's it's realistic because it's pretty much just you're going to drop in and it's going to fall with gravity. So, you know, going up or down or this or that is going to have a very minimum uh, impact on where it actually lands. But you would enter that scope, try and line something up, and then you're going to exit it, and you're actually flying now either directly at the ground or directly away from the ground, <laughs> nowhere near where you wanted to go. And it's just, I don't know if I like it or don't like it, or maybe that's just the necessity of having a bomber with sights. I don't know. I just, I never knew how to use the bomber sites because I could never tell where the bombs were going to land. It always seemed I'm, just kind of random. Yeah, and I'm not sure if it was, if it's actually where it is, but I believe the way it works is they'll hit the ground exactly where those sites are. But I honestly don't know if that's true. Yeah. Um, it, it was, it, they're very hard to use, which is why more often than not, I chose to use the carpet bombing technique because yeah. it's a lot easier because <laughs> you just drop it on C because there's always lots of people at C. Yep. So I have a question. Um, the mega vehicles, uh, we, we know of the train and the Zeppelin. Is there basically a new one for every map? And do we know what the other ones are? Uh, it's not something I'm familiar with. Does anyone else? I believe it is a giant tank walker. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Church, with Metal Churchill's Gear? face on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I would imagine if, if I were if I were a betting man, I'd bet we're gonna see that Zeppelin in more than one map. Yeah, probably. No, oh, I hope sure. not. I, think... I mean this this is their chance to do like map specific stuff, like levolutions, man. <laughs> I think yeah, going oh, up that bridge up to the mountain. Yeah, I still I don't know how to do no that idea what was <laughs> I think did, did, one you, of the, uh... did you get it to happen? Nope. Oh, okay. No, I'm pretty sure that was fake, right? Did, there, yeah, I saw there, it. No, I saw it. Was, I saw it. No, it there happened. Was some... Just inconsistent. Wait, you saw it happen in a game? Yeah, I saw the... You can... Okay, so sorry for everyone else. <laughs> we're talking about the ridge up onto the... Uh, we're talking about the the rock arch up to onto the ridge over F, the sniper, sniper zone a.k.a. the Sniper Hellscape, uh, <laughs> you are hypothetically able to destroy that. We tried a lot of times with a many, many tank shells, yeah. but uh, there's, some, there's some voodoo to destroying that that I'm not sure we, we know. Yeah, I, I, I wasted like a large part of a round being a real helpful teammate just shooting at a rock ridge, <laughs> and nothing came of it, so... I think uh, like the entire squad of us were doing that at one point, and nothing was going <laughs> yeah. on. Like, some of us were so on there with dynamite, and others were shooting at <laughs> a tank, it's like, yeah. just not working. You're welcome, everyone else. Mm. Well, I'm still I, doing more than the snipers. There's at least six enemy snipers up there, so we're not. We're still in the positive. All right, <laughs> all right, okay. We're we're look. I've loved everything we talked about to this point. Let's let's. It's time to get mad. We <laughs> talked about how there were a lot of snipers, but Jesus, uh, <sighs> three fourths of the team. Didn't we count? There, three fourths yep. of the team was just snipers. I think even with the changes uh, okay. to conquest, like giving more points for capping than kills and not making tickets count down the the. The tickets or the desk count down the tickets, like all that might have helped a little bit, but there's still way too many snipers. I, and I, I agree. I think that's such a good change. Respawning yeah. does not impact your tickets. The only thing that impacts your, your, your tickets now is territory control. And that is such a good change because you're not going to have people camping this or spot or that spot or worrying about their KD more and, and thinking in some way, oh, I've got a great KD. I'd surely have helped the team. No, it's it's an objective-based game. And now that's what it's about. And that's great. And maybe maybe that would have finally got through to these people, these people who sit up on a ridge <laughs> all game and just snipe all game and that's all they do. But no, 
It <laughs> hasn't done anything. There are still tons of these people. Yeah. Uh, they, they're given these awesome gadgets. You have a, a flare gun, which is very uh, equivalent to the whiz balls in, in what game was that? Was that 2142? No, that's actually uh, Bad Company 2. Bad Company Back 2. Co yeah, Bad Company 2. Uh, it, the flare gun basically uh, magically spots enemies on the minimap, which I don't think a lot of people realize, to be fair. <laughs> uh, you have another variant of a flare gun, which basically makes the enemy feel like they're standing on the surface of the fucking sun. Yeah, that's, sun. that's ridiculous. We thought it the game was amazing. glitched. It is amazing. It is amazing. I think and, it did and bug you out have, sometimes. Yeah, they did bug out. And and I mean, also, you have the ability to bayonet charge, even with a sniper rifle, which, by the way, we need to talk about that, because bayonet charging is oh, yeah. incredible. Amazing. Uh, <laughs> perhaps the single coolest addition? I don't know. That's maybe overstating it. But That's it is like the biggest satisfying. bummer to me is meaning the support is I don't have it. <laughs> oh, yeah. For some reason, they didn't give any of the support guns a I, I have to believe that once we get weapon customization, there's got to be some options. There, probably, uh, yeah. there must be. Because, boy, guys, it, it, anyone listening to this, if you have not gotten off a successful bayonet charge, man, there's uh, the sound design... The movement, uh, everything about it is incredible. And I hope, I hope they actually, I hope they do make the screaming server side, because I did notice <laughs> that when you when you do a bayonet charge, your dude is ho like it's it's and it's not a fun scream because you know this game is very brutal. This might be one of the most brutal battlefields to date. And and let's be honest, World War One was a brutal brutal war. And so when you bayonet charge, your guy just lets out a holler that is that is kind of heart shattering. But on the but to everyone else, you're just silently moving forward with your gun raised a little bit, and it looks <laughs> kind of ridiculous. Um, <laughs> they definitely need to so, make it like in chivalry, where if you scream, everybody will hear. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> make it make it like insurgency with our uh, air horns. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> and, and no, but and, here's the thing about like the sound design and and the brutality. What is I think Dice has always set themselves apart with extremely extremely high quality sound design in the, in the Battlefield games. Um, obviously, especially with four with Bad Company two, I think Battlefront is really good. Obviously, not not strictly a Battlefield game, but um, to your point about this being brutal, you guys need to do yourself a favor, everyone. Um, there are about thirty minute long uh, YouTube videos of all of the audio tracks from uh, the soldiers in multiple, like one speaking German, one speaking um, English, British English, and it is uh, man about halfway through. It's <laughs> pretty brutal. With them like responding to uh, how how terrible everything is going and uh, watching all their friends die around them, which is uh, you know yeah I there's, think there's, there's in, a weird, this... in a weird way we have some separation because this war happened you know uh, ninety years ago but I don't, I don't know if we could have this sound design for a more recent conflict really and and there's this there's a podcast I believe me and you uh, both listen to David um, that maybe you guys have listened to as well called Hardcore History uh, Dan Carlin is is the host and he. He does these amazing series on, on different parts of history, getting really in-depth into the things that you don't. And he had this series called Road to Armageddon, which was all about World War One. And it's crazy how little I knew about World War One, And it's also crazy how absolutely awful it was. I mean, uh, the battles were these mud-soaked fields where people would die because they were just stuck in mud and no one could take the time to get them out. It was too hard or they'd be risk stuck in mud. So you'd go, you'd go off to war and your friend would be stuck in mud and you'd come back from war a week later and he's there, his body is there. He just died of starvation just in mud uh, up to his neck. And it's, it's, yeah, it is a horrible war uh, where everyone had uh, light tanks and automatic weapons. And I, really, I really, I really hope we don't have a mud map where you can't move in the game. Oh my goodness! So here's the thing, like that's that that, and that's you know, I, I think just to put a cap on it. I mean, I would love everyone else's perspective too, but I, it's it's there's a weird kind of um, cognitive dissonance there where like some of the audio lines are are immersive and and you know kind of like unsettling, but then we talk about and not just we, but anybody talks about like. Oh, gas grenades aren't OP enough, or like, I, why? You know, why does everyone have these this set of weapons, or or what have you, based on sort of like historical verisim verisimilitude? But it's like, man, I don't really want to experience most yeah, really. of World War One. Let's just embrace the uh, sort of gameplay aspects of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, truly, if if we want to get really into the gas grenades, if if we want to make it realistic to World War One, you'd, you'd get hit by it. And then your lungs would begin to liquefy, and that would be it. It'd be a one-hit kill. And I don't think that makes for good gameplay. Uh, I do love the addition of the gas mask, although I barely feel like I really used it. Um, I, I like it in concept. I don't know if it actually really has a place in the game. I've, I've definitely use it. used it a couple times, yeah. especially for when sure. people are trying to keep me out of a building. Oh, yeah. And I would mm -hmm. just charge in there with a the bayonet with my gas mask on and spear them. 
Conversely, I like yeah. to throw gas into a building with a bunch of like snipers in camp and just run in there with a gas mask and a shotgun and clean house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hide inside it. Hide inside of a crater. Pop my yep. own gas on top of myself. So it's very hard. It's both hard to see me and approach me. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I actually do love the balance of the gas mask. It's like sincerely constrains your vision and dude, it requires you to hip fire, which is as really a cool. support, dude. Forget about it. If they, if I have my gas mask on, I'm not even trying to shoot at people. It's not happening. Yeah, yeah, and and, and that suppression was suppression points. <laughs> well, and, and I agree with you, Matt, because like it was crazy how I my I had this dream to be a gas monster. I would be a support. <laughs> I'd have gas grenades. I'd have resupply, and I'd have trip wire gas uh, uh, traps, basically, and I would just spew gas all the time. <laughs> And it was fun, and I got a lot of enemy hit points. It never, ever really gets a kill, but it, it does get a lot of assists and all that. But then, you know, someone would inevitably have a mask on, and I'd try and fight them, and yeah, good luck with that with a light machine gun. It was just terrible. I mean, it was still a lot of fun, especially around point C, that really contentious infantry hotspot. But but yeah, light machine guns really suffer. And, and they don't just suffer in that regard. They suffer from being the only class that doesn't get a bayonet. They're very, I don't know, I don't know why I like that class, I don't know why I like LMG so much, because they definitely have a lot of downsides, but I always, I don't really, and I'm not the one to like look at a graph, I'll, I'll use a gun because I like how it feels, like even though it might not be the best gun, so I don't know, I, I, I clicked with that, that weapon I unlocked. The one with the bipod and the scope, I don't remember what it was called. But. For sure. I think the suppressor, but... Nah, let's. No, okay, sorry. <laughs> no, but let, let's let's talk about weapon feel, guys. Because, I mean, to your point, uh, Matt, this is uh, really critical uh, in terms of, like, I think setting Battlefield 1 apart, even from other Battlefield games. I feel like the weapons are, have, a, have really brought a diversity and, like, a chunkiness uh, to uh, to the game that I found really satisfying. And what about you guys? I, I mean, I, like like yeah. you said before, Battlefield always sets itself apart with sound design. The guns sound amazing. Uh, the explosions sound deafening. Uh, I didn't try any of the different audio settings. I don't even know if there were. Did they bring back war tapes? Uh, I would be shocked if they didn't have it, but I didn't, honestly didn't look myself. So. Yeah, so I mean, the game, the game felt great. These, these guns felt great. I feel like the bullets travel faster in this game. Um, cause the, the firefights definitely felt snappier and less floaty than Battlefield traditionally does. I could be wrong about that. I also feel like time to kill is a lot lower and people died a lot faster. Speaking of floaty, yeah. I do want to mention the mantling problems cause that was, that was fucking infuriating when you're trying to like mantle over a rock and you basically like mantle up and then you're right back in the same position you're in yeah. before you yeah, start. I can climb walls real easy, but for some reason, like the little uh, step those ups rocks get around over. A yeah. God, if, so bad. I'm, I'm fine. If they want to reduce the mantling, like minimum floor, you know, don't, or, or, or ceiling. Don't let me mantle over certain things that are high. Just don't get me into the mantling animation. If it's something <laughs> I can't get over, exactly. that is the most exactly. frustrating thing, especially when you're, at, you're doing something really cool. You know, you just, killed three guys and suddenly a tank rounds the corner and you're running away and you try and mantle over it but nope the game just stops and you're still just on that wall and you're just staring at it and then you blow up three mantle uh, attempts then you die <laughs> yeah three yeah it is a tragic shortcoming there were i mean there were quite a lot of bugs i noticed a lot of bugs with vehicle seat positions and vehicle loadouts apparently oh yeah as the rumor was is that the last person to get in a vehicle determines the loadout for that entire vehicle Whoa. which seems insane <laughs> Um, I got I in the I got in the train once and uh, I looked up and I somehow I was looking at the top of the turret and my gun was shooting a good two inches below where my reticle was, basically making the seat impossible to use. I actually got out of the train, got back in. It was the same way, so I don't know if it was bugged for everyone at that point on, but that was is that the, the the final gun on the train? I, I don't remember like the, the position. Right it was a machine yeah. gun. It wasn't the anti air. Some yeah. of the train, some of the train guns are broken for sure. And 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 though not technically a bug, spotting has been really refined. I actually think it's a good change because before, if you saw, if you were looking over in a distance and you said maybe there's an enemy over there, you could hit Q, <laughs> and if they were within anywhere in your screen, a little Dorito oh, yeah. would pop up, and oh. you could you could pop um, them. Q spotting, being Q spotted was a death sentence. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Frankly. Before, if you got Q spot, and you, you Q spot some guy in a bush, he's dead like two seconds later, almost always. Yeah. This game, I don't know if it's people tend to not. I don't know. They don't this. Q spot doesn't last as long it seems like too it doesn't it doesn't, it doesn't last, last as long uh, to to actually spot them you literally need to have your crosshair over them they have you have to be on top of them center your screen on top of them there's no real sphere radius to the selection anymore and also i believe you need line of sight to the person to even see the spot icon i believe so mm. and so like there's there's q spotting changes which i think are really great there's something else i think is amazing 
Uh, you no longer reveal yourself on the minimap by firing an unsuppressed weapon, of course, because suppressors weren't really a, uh, a major factor. So I found it kind of giving you really awesome opportunities to actually, in an urban environment, actually be able to sneak up mm -hmm. on people, like yeah. actually actively fire and, and move in a way that I found, uh, found really awesome. I was watching the minimap a whole lot less because of that, too. Just yeah, and I think that's why nobody really was aware that um, the scout's spotting mm -hmm. flare picked up people on the minimap. Um, also, the, the default minimap is so small that if you launch a flare, you know, across the way to a place you're moving to, you probably won't even be able to see those dots until you're right on top of them, and it's more or less useless. You have to hit N a couple times to really get uh, uh, zoomed out enough to really make use of any spotting things on the minimap. Um, but but they need to fix it so that that same spotting mechanic isn't used for setting orders on points. Because if you're in a vehicle and you're a squad leader and you're trying to <laughs> tell your team where to go and it's moving at all, you will never get an order on that point. And it is well, it's, incredibly frustrating. It's a very context-sensitive button, though, now, because that's how you actually give ammo or, or health to people who need it is, is using Q. Like you can oh, look really? at somebody and hit Q. Yeah. yeah. It's actually pretty cool because you know whether or not they need it or not. Because if you look at someone and doesn't have it, then they don't need it. But you can oh. actually toss it like a guy riding past on a horse. I look at him just toss a, a ammo pack at him and he gets it. Yeah, it's pretty, like a pretty awesome. Just yeah, it's great. And he gets it. That is awesome. I had that's no idea. I, I never used that. 52 supplies, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember that. I was like, wow, that's a lot of supplies. Oh, to be He's fair, I was stuff. like laying down in a, in a <laughs> in one of those craters, resupplying and throwing grenades over and over and over at one point <laughs> to like shell out some people. Real, real quick, because we are starting to run a little bit out of time. I just want to say that the saber on the horse is the most incredible weapon Battlefield has ever developed. Don't change a thing. Yeah, honestly, do not change a thing, Dice. Just leave it. It is perfect the way it is. It, 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 I, I have nothing else to say to that. It is incredible. Never, ever use the lever action on the horse. The saber was amazing. It is a one-shot kill to anyone. There was an instance where a sentry had pretty much... I, I, I got one shot off on a sentry. I was low on health. He was right next to us. He was about to kill two of us. And... Uh, David came in on a horse, like a knight in shining armor, and cut him <laughs> down right in front of me, and it was the best <laughs> battlefield moment of my life. Now, if they're prone, though, you can't hit them with the sword, exactly. right? You have to run them over. Yes. So but this is what I, this is why I love the cat, the saber. It's a one hit kill, and it's in kind of a swath. It kind of the hitbox is kind of very is a little wide mm -hmm. um, relative to when you swing it, but it's only on the right side of the horse, and if you're prone, you cannot be hit by it. So, you know, you can run somebody over directly with a roadkill, which I've definitely done after my horse has done on my behalf after I died. <laughs> but um, I found it really satisfying because it neutralizes. In, it is a very strong counter to strong individual enemies, especially out in the open. And uh, but it's not impossible to counter like you can totally dive, get out of the way. And a crafty enemy who knows you're there will uh, oftentimes get you. But you can really sneak up on people. Yeah, and especially the special weapons, they put them on the sides for a purpose. You have to traverse to the city portion. I mean, you could just get in a vehicle, but it, you, oftentimes you have to walk it. So there's a good chance the horse could come up on you and cut you down. Well, and with and with getting in a vehicle is sometimes more of a death sentence because all the snipers have K bullets now, which are I actually think is a good change because it makes the sniper more viable. Anything to make the sniper class more viable, so they might actually wise up and say, "Hey, I can do more than sit on this ridge." Is you know, is I, a fantastic. I don't, change. I don't want to promote snipers anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, yeah, can, can we make snipers like resupply their own bullets and they shoot bullets that heal themselves and uh, they never have to come down from cliffs? They auto spawn on cliffs. They can climb walls. They get um, can, they just be counted, can they not be counted against my team's capacity? And can they not get points for kills? Like, can, we need can to do they something call down this. giant walking robots? <laughs> <laughs> That's in a different game coming out this fall. Yeah, coming, coming Can out. they please breathe through their skin? Titan Field 2 <laughs> coming out in October. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Jesus. It, it's, a, it's a very it's a very good game i don't know if it's worth the cost is my question oh my god not premium oh my god but you want that beautiful statue what's base the base game, game though isn't the base game the just base game is 60 bucks it's the same okay. price right yeah it's the same but 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 if you want premium with it it's like 130 dollars for the whole package which is ridiculous but as history has shown, they constantly have sales on that afterwards. So why would you buy it up front? I don't. I don't what, know. what do you gain? You'd buy exactly? it up front if you want to get in at the ground floor. 
I mean, guys, that, we, we we live in a post No Man's Sky world. I will never pre-order it another game. <laughs> well, to be fair, I mean, I'm pretty sure they have that great game guarantee, so you could actually return it. They have a pretty lenient return policy on Origin. Yeah, Origin's but, return so, policy is actually now better than Steam's, which is surprising. You, you, you're not really risking too much, and and we already kind of know what we're in for on this one. But I, I probably still won't pre-order it because I don't really. I don't know. I don't think I'm going to pre-order it. I'm not 100% certain I'll per- I mean I'll probably I'll almost certainly purchase this game. I don't know about premium. Uh, maybe down the line when it's cheaper. I do think that this game definitely shows it has a lot of talent and work behind it. I don't know if that much work really uh, kind of conveys $130. So, what uh, counterpoint Who's excited for that campaign, baby? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, if it's anything I, like I, the I Hardline campaign, I'm excited. <laughs> I have. I am perhaps the only one in this group who has the bizarre affliction that I enjoy playing the shooting gallery, like major, <laughs> major, like end of year for FPS mm. release campaigns. I, do I mean, that Bad Company Two campaign was pretty, pretty amazing. Oh, well, Bad Company Two as a whole was just the best. Still, still in my mind, is the best in the series. Do we want to run down Battlefield ranks, baby? <laughs> Uh, Hardline's obviously number one. <laughs> Hardline, obviously one. I mean, no, sorry, <laughs> mode specifically. <laughs> uh, Hardline uh, is number one. Hardline is also number two. Uh, Battlefield 1943, only on the PS3, is number two. <laughs> well, those Battlefield, epic 16 don't forget about Battlefield battles. Heroes. Battlefield Heroes was oh, a yeah, fantastic game. Uh, how game. dare you remind me of Battlefield Heroes. <laughs> <laughs> um... Okay, so so we are starting to run out of time here. Does anyone have any last points they want to bring up? Any any uh, last burning desires? The they should make the allied icons way bigger than they are right now because oh my I God, had yeah, a really hard time definitely. telling if a plane was an enemy or a friend. Uh, along oh, with yeah. like, the sniper glints in the distance, like half the time they were friendlies, and I was like mm-hmm. shooting at them for no reason. Uh, also, make hot wire with horses. <laughs> make hot wire with horses. Hot, hot horses. Uh, wire with. Can we? <laughs> Can we bring back uh, one thing I really miss? Uh, uh, not miss, excuse me. I'm I'm all over the place. Uh, bayonet charge and melee should be different buttons, in my opinion. Um, uh, I thought. Yeah, I'd what, agree they, with that. Wait a minute, they are, aren't they? No. Nope. They both they're both on F by default. It just depends uh, if you're sprinting and respond. hold yeah. a bayonet weapon, and and it will screw yeah. you over too because if you get a successful bayonet charge. The little dial that's a circle that indicates you can bayonet charge will actually be full, even though after getting a successful bayonet charge, you have a weird, random recharge time that's not conveyed to you at all, and you can then it's melee. A refraction period, like right? Idiot. Yeah, yeah. Well, they say if you bayonet a different person, that there is no refractionary period. <laughs> hey, when you ba- when you bayonet somebody, you're bayoneting everyone they've ever bayoneted. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, uh, Battlefield 1 is a first-person shooter developed by DICE, uh, published by EA. It comes out on October 21st of this year. Uh, $60 or $130 if you want premium. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Take care. All right. right. Later. Uh, Room tone. In a world where tiny spaceship, tiny spaceship, oh, tiny spaceship, this just in, tiny spaceship, tiny spaceship, another thrilling adventure with tiny spaceship. (laughs) Most of those are jokes. Enjoy.